So one of the most interesting perspectives in the study of ayahuasca is the globalized expansion of rituals from one culture into another. Predominantly the worldwide spreading of the ayahuasca churches, Santo Daimi and uh, UDV, and the spectrum of shamanic and neo-shamanic rituals. In what will follow, I will address to one aspect of this globalization that is called transfer of ritual. The transfer of ritual, as we coined the term in our Heidelberg uh, Ritual Dynamics Research Group, can be understood as a special case of ritual dynamics, which addresses to the change of the context surrounding the rituals. In this case, the rituals of Santo Daimi, which are conducted in Europe, or in other words, transferred from Brazil to Europe, to Germany. I will argue that the analysis of ritual transfers a complex undertaking which does not only involve ritual performances as such, but also needs to consider political and cultural contexts as well as psychological aspects of ritual participants. While my abstract is titled Santo Daime in Europe, I will base my arguments and analysis on data from uh, a study with members of Santo Daime we, that we conducted in Germany over the course um, of the last 10 years. To speak of Santo Daime in Europe would be a generalization that cannot be held up for various reasons. Uh, the most prominent being that uh, the psychoactive ingredient of ayahuasca, DMT, is classified as illicit substance or class one um, or class A <clears throat> in Germany, whereas the legal situation differs from country to country within Europe. So for details of the legal debate, I would like to refer to a book. Um, it's called The Internationaliz Internationalization of Ayahuasca, edited by uh, Bia Labache and my colleague uh, Henrik Jungarbeide. And that will give you details on, uh, on several countries in Europe. And also, uh, Mark Blaney will speak about um, the country of Belgium in the um, upcoming presentation. So it will become clear that Santo Daime rituals in Germany are conducted similarly to those in Brazil and follow the um, church's norms of ritual as proposed uh, by the doctrine. There are, however, some specific differences between Santo Daime in, in Brazil and in Germany. Not necessarily do those differences apply to the ritual repertoire itself, but they can be seen as functions of cultural and political contexts. In order to analyze those, it needs a framework that encompasses <clears throat> not only the rituals themselves, but also considers uh, what I would like to call contextual variables. And I will base my analysis of ritual transfer on uh, the ideas of uh, drug set and setting. Uh, the research background um, embedded in the study of uh, ritual dynamics of substance use in various contexts. Um, for instance, um, we went into schools, but also did a study on the, uh, the Swiss doctors who practice uh, psycholytic and psychedelic therapy f uh, legally from 88 till 93 and practicing it now again, or at least uh, conducting studies like Peter Gasser, Peter Oehren. And as part of this larger study, we conducted interviews with 17 Fardados, members of the church, uh, with uh, both genders, um, and the age ranged from 22 to 67, with an average age of uh, 46 years. So Santo Daime is not exactly a youth culture. And the range of their professions uh, included carpenters, social workers, pharmacists, uh, and organizational consultants, just to give some ideas. Uh, generally, they were integrated in the middle-class society and can be described as open-minded and non-dogmatic uh, people following an alternative lifestyle. So, um, because often people talk of expansion of, of this religion, to answer the question, has Santo Daime expanded in Germany? Um, at least for the last 10 years, I would say no. According to our st study participants, there is not a significant growth of committed church members. There may be many people who are interested in ayahuasca and uh, out of curiosity uh, go to rituals. Oh, thanks. <clears throat> but, it's, but one could not talk of an expansion uh, um, of, of church members. So <clears throat> I would say uh, nowadays there's a stable core of approximately 30 to 50 uh, fadados, church members, which are organized in several small 
centers in, in the bigger cities all over the country. And around this stable core, there um, are several, um, as we may denote them, visitors of rituals. And they're open to, to uh, let them take part in Santo Daime rituals. So what is ritual transfer? Um, my colleagues um, developed the concept to offer a new perspective on the development of rituals under such circumstances as migration or the emergence of transnational communities and globalization. And ritual transfer for them takes place by definition when one or more aspects of the context of a ritual or rite is changed. So and, uh, they make a differentiation between the, the context, uh, contextual aspects of ritual and the internal dimensions. And um, as you can see, the encompassing and concise analysis of transfer of ritual can be an extensive undertaking because there's so many variables uh, that come into play there. So <clears throat> it's like the broadest frame I, I would put up for this um, analysis. But now, how can the transfer of rituals with psychoactive, uh, psychoactives um, be conceptualized? If we look at substance-related rituals, the model of drug setting setting lends itself as a starting point. It was originally theorized by um, Tim Leary and colleagues and elaborated by Norman Zinberg to explain the conditions of controlled use of psychoactive substances in general. So Zinberg's approach was groundbreaking in integrating biomedical, sociological, anthropological, psychological, uh, and political perspectives. However, to give a meaningful account of substance-related rituals, substance rituals and their transfer, one major obstacle um, is the sheer abundance of factors. So the key question is which pharmaceuticals, um, so the, the category substance or drug, uh, psychological category setting, and uh, judicial and cultural variables, um, and I will call them variables since I'm a trained psychologist, uh, which of them are useful for comparing rituals? Yeah? You need to set up some criteria to, to establish a co comparison at all. So I cannot go into detail uh, into all of those variables, but I will um, present a few that, that seem uh, crucial in, as for defining differences between Brazil and Germany. So um, if we go to the substance, um, <clears throat> the question, of course, is what type of, of ayahuasca or daimi, as the church members call it, with its special pharmaceutical properties that, uh, is taken. And um, here there is no differences. Like generally spoken, because the uh, substance, the daimi that uh, the church members in, in Germany drink comes, uh, is imported from Brazil. So c coming to the set, um, there's, there could be um, several um, variables again. Zinberg quotes, uh, uh, Zinberg denotes the set as the attitude of the person at the time of use, including his personality structure. So, I mean, that's a big chunk of, of information, a personality, personality structure. So if we just focus on, inf uh, on motivational aspects, which are central to the set, uh, we found that there are different kinds and, and sometimes overlapping um, types of motivation. Heuristically, one may differentiate between recreational motives, um, curiosity, especially in the case of neophytes, going to a diamond ritual for the first time. Socially related rituals, uh, motives, uh, developmental motives such as self-exploration, uh, of course religious use or spiritual development, and finally, and I would make a distinction here, uh, therapeutic <coughs> motivation including self-medication, which may uh, all lead uh, different people to attend uh, Santo Daime rituals. And um, I cannot go into detail here, but the biographies of our um, study participants um, are, for example, being the child of a parent who is a committed leader of Santo Daime in Germany, so, and it's a classical way of getting socialized into a religion, or getting referred to the church during a meditation retreat. It's a woman who had not any experiences with any psychoactive substances before, so um, she started um, taking legalized substances with, uh, with Daime, 
or having a past of cocaine abuse and finding cure in Santodaime. So these are just three examples. And it's, it's a big variety of, of biographical trajectories leading people to go to rituals. So let's come to the, to the setting, the, the most um, interesting point here, or the context. Um, of course, there's geographical and spatial circumstances as immediate settings uh, in which ritual takes place. And whereas in the Netherlands, and of course in Brazil, uh, rituals take place in, in Santo Daime's own churches, uh, in Germany they are often conducted in rented, rented houses or participants' homes. So one study participant, you can see the uh, transcribed quote, this is from an interview, described the different climatic conditions. <laughs> he says, uh, most churches in Brazil are outdoors, and that's simply another component which doesn't count here, those forces of nature which you feel much more strongly there, especially in the Amazon, where you are much more exposed to the forces of nature as a human being than here, here in Germany, where the interview was conducted. So considering the number of participants, most rituals in Germany are quite small. Although we've visited large rituals in an Amsterdam church with over 100 participants, comprising fardados from all over Europe and from Brazil, most rituals conducted within Germany are more private, often attend only between 15, 20, 25 people. And a church member um, comments on this, again in a comparison uh, between Brazil and, and Germany, he says, it creates a completely different energy if it's not 50, but 300 or 400 people singing, who all sing really well. It is really overwhelming because I've never experienced anything like that here in Europe. And one major aspect, of course, is the ritual performance uh, itself. It may be ideal, typically stated, that the majority of Santo Daime rituals in Germany are conducted according to the church's norms of ritual. However, when asked about differences between Santo Daime in Brazil and in Germany, several interviews stated that the ritual atmosphere or energy, something that is empirically hard to grasp, yeah, um, differs in both countries. So, another quote. Oh, no. I'll come to the quote later. That's a church in, in Amsterdam, and there was like a larger ritual conducted in 2004, I believe. Um, you see the preparation. <coughs> And there were, yeah, quite a few people. And um, then in comparison, that's a ritual from German participants. You see that's smaller, it's not in a church, it's in a rented house. I mean, the, the ritual decor and, and symbols um, are the same in the performance as well. But it uh, seems understandable that there's a different atmosphere and different energy. So, um, and someone says, differences, the people. In Brazil, they are Brazilians. Well, and they have a completely different energy and spirit in the work. And they are local and what they bring into it is completely different. And it is really evident in the work, the energy is really different. Maybe to somebody from the outside it would not look like it, but when you are in the ritual yourself, there's something different going on. Yeah. So finally, there's one type of ritual out of the um, repertoire that is not conducted in Germany, uh, the production of daimi. It makes sense because the plants don't grow as far as I know <coughs> in, in, in my country. So some of the study participants travel to Brazil not only to take part in the fechio and in, in the preparation and the production of the daimi, but of course to get in, involved in exchange processes with the ritual specialists and church members there. So. Um, and in turn, Brazilian ritual specialists in their comitivas uh, frequently visit the churches in Germany and in Europe. Uh, for instance, there's some connection with uh, Nilton Cavarelli, who's an, um, uh, a ritual leader in, in, in Brazil, and there's uh, this invitation. And you see that <coughs> in 2007, it's to, uh, to in Europe. So, Basically, they, there's a quite um, strong orientation on a Brazilian uh, church, but also there's something which one may call Germanization of Santo Daime. 
um, and we observed some adaptations, um, which were like minor, but they were there. We observed it added to this, for instance, added to the specific Portuguese daimi hymns. Some hymns at the end of rituals were sung mm -hmm. um, in German. And these hymns partly contained motives from pre-Christian and Nordic mythology, like dragons, ecstatic flights, or dwarfs. So such hymns can be understood as an orientation towards a non-Christian heritage in Central Europe, mirroring a clear distinction from and contrast to the Christian influences, and in some cases from their own Protestant or Catholic socialization. These are the main, two main churches in Germany. So basically, in several cases, church members who grew up in Christian context turned away from Christianity in their adolescence to later join a Catholic-influenced uh, religion, namely Santo Daime, to modify rituals with non-Christian elements. So let's come to the uh, cultural setting, uh, which is not limited to the, to the ritual performance as such, but the um, like overarching belief system, language systems, and assumption um, of, of reality and consciousness that are usually taken for granted. So our study participants see differences in the degrees of enculturation and communal organization of Santo Daime in Brazil. Yeah. Um, quote, in Brazil, people are very close to nature. They know how to make diamond. They know the spirits who are called. They simply got a different relationship to it all. It is normal for them to take part in a diamond ritual. Just like people here go to church, people there go to diamond rituals. It's simply that Santo Daime there is lived like a tribal community, like living in a community, where people actually live together and don't just get together for the rituals. And it works, like the Christian church used to work here. It's the ethical and religious context that binds it all together as a social cultural mechanism of integration. This study participant has a BA in anthropology, by the way. So people live together, they do this together, and they simply are together. And here it's more like, well, people also do get together, and they're usually the same group of people, but they don't live together. And that's the important difference for me when you ask between Europe and Brazil, that's the context, that the context is missing, the context of everyday life. Huh? So another uh, difference is, is the Portuguese language. Like some um, study participants know Portuguese, some don't. So that leads to um, the, the, the hymns that are of course in Portuguese, but they are translated. So during the rituals, um, sometimes in, in the textbooks, uh, people, if they want to understand the, 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 the meanings and the, and the lyrics of, of the hymns, so to speak, uh, they need to switch between uh, the Portuguese and the, um, and the translation. So, um, oh yeah, that's a nice uh, quote, <clears throat> talking of ritual literacy and, and um, getting some, some subjective meaning on, on what is transported in a ri uh, rituals and in a religion. Um, that's a quote from a woman who um, came from Israel, but she's married to a, to a German, both are members of Santo Daime, and, and she says, I'm Jewish, and until I came into contact with Santo Daime, I'd never had anything to do with Jesus Christ. This is not part of our Bible, and I never cared about it, because I was not very religious. It had nothing to do with my life. And then I came to Santo Daime and I had to sing Jesus Christ. And suddenly it was really difficult for me to sing Jesus Christ. It was very difficult for me whenever I saw that Jesus Christ was coming up in a song. I couldn't sing Jesus Christ. And then later on I learned to open my mouth and to say it properly. And then came the stage that whenever I was saying Jesus Christ, I felt something about it. Yeah. Just a, an example on, on how uh, meanings get okay and culturized. So there would, could be many more to be said about cultural con context, for instance, uh, the notions of, of possession uh, episodes that happen during rituals. But I will uh, 
before I conclude, come to the most overarching context, the political context. Yeah? Uh, and that plays, of course, a major role for participants' experience in, in, and rituals. It's, it can be seen as the all-encompassing context and crucial in this analysis. While the use of ayahuasca within the Church of Santo Daime is legal in Brazil, and the production and supply of the sacrament is ensured, it is not legal in Germany. And so, Santo Daime, Germany depends on the supply from Brazil. Yeah. Um, so, and that can sometimes be a, um, well, difficult enterprise. And um, due to these legal constraints, I mean, I did not say that it, um, it is illegal in Germany, and due to these legal constraints, there are no own churches, there is no recognized, uh, it's not a recognized uh, um, church, and consequently several, um, oops, no, 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 sorry. Yeah, because due to these legal constraints, it is easier to follow the calendario, to, to give another differences. So the rhythm of rituals in, in Brazil than in Germany. And um, consequently, several followers of Santo Daime, because uh, Daime being illegal, have traveled frequently to the Netherlands. And this opportunity, however, has been often limited by their financial and time resources, which in turn will influence their pattern, pattern of participation. Yeah. So, um, okay, <laughs> there's one more quote, Brian, is it okay? okay. Uh, one could argue, no, I'll leave this out, we can discuss the, the, the suitability of, of the drug set and setting model for, for analyzing ritual transfer. Um, I would just, instead of a final conclusion, end my talk with a quotation from two long time Santo uh, Daime members in Germany to also give them a voice in this conference. Ayahuasca religions like Santo Daime establish a modern cultural model to experience the mysterium tremendum of existence which should be considered a birthright for every human being that seeks spiritual or simply human education. If some countries like Peru and Brazil are ready to esteem the traditions of ritual ayahuasca uses as national cultural heritage, should it not be possible for the legislative authorities in Germany and other European countries to to take into account that ayahuasca is used by the religious groups which have chosen as, as the sacrament in a serious and responsible way that gives cause to the assumption of beneficial effects for many of the religious, religious practitioners. Germany, given its history of abuse of minority rights, is a nation with a special responsibility for the protection of rel religious minorities. The future of Santo Daime in Germany will demonstrate if this country is ready to take over this resp responsibility in and for a religiously dynamic, globalized world. So, thank you for your um, patience.